So in this video, I'm going to go through some of the modifications I made to the stock Skywalker Eve 2000. Because this plane is so large, I needed a way to mount the electronics where they wouldn't get lost in the space and I'd have a hard time getting access to things. So I came up with this electronics tray, which sits close to the top and gives me access to everything. You can see here I've started a rough layout of the parts and where I'm going to put them. I'm still waiting for a few things to come in the mail, like double pole switches so I can turn transmitters on and off and route video or data depending on what transmitters I have on or off. And I've cut a bunch of holes in there so that I can run the wires down and underneath and then do all the cable management underneath. So there should, should be a nice clean install. Blind nuts were attached to the bottom plate before it was installed into the plane and then risers which fit into tabbed slots in both the bottom plate and the electronics tray ensure that it's properly located and then the holes there except nylon bolts that go all the way through to the bottom and bolt the whole thing together so this just goes in like this come in on a bit of an angle so it fits and then locate for the tabs on the top and then a couple of nylon bolts go into the holes and then match up with the blind nut on the bottom. If you tighten that down, that would probably be solid on its own. Then on the front, I also added just a tab and a slot that's bolted to the front there just to make extra sure it doesn't go anywhere. This comes out just as easy. You just pull the two bolts after unscrewing them, of course. Lifting off the locating tab, sliding back slightly, pivot, and then remove. This lets you do any work you need to do on the electronics or get access into the lower floor of the airplane, and all of your wiring stays intact. As you can see, I completely rewired the standard D sub 7W2 connector and added the standard servo connectors, just like I did on my twin dream. The orange plastic is a very stiff thermoplastic, 400 degree soldering iron just melts right through it leaves you a little lip of soft material that leaves you a little edge you can form before it cools so you can push the connector through and then i fortified that all up with hot glue and then on the wing side i added a little piece of id card plastic just to give me something meaty to mount to in the foam i changed the complete pinouts wasn't very happy with how it was. All the negatives ran through the one negative battery terminal here, and I wasn't really too keen on how that ground loop might have happened. Uh, so you can see in the diagram how I've rewired everything. And uh, this still attaches very, very easily. You just have to line the servo connectors up first, and then you push it home, and you're on. So it'll be a little bit more difficult with a wing on it, but not much. Uh, the way it's wired now, I still have two spare wires, and I'm considering what I can do with them. So if you have a thought, post it in the comments, and what you think would be good to go in the wing, then I can use my extra two wires for. Uh, lights, landing gear, wing cam, anything. I routed the permanent connections behind the plywood included in the kit for the sides. I just quickly carved a little groove for all the wires to go in, and then glued the plates over top, much like you'd do if you were doing a wing with laminate. Up here you've got the airspeed sensor and then the bus for the gimbal and the GoPro. The leads for the flight board cam lead to the front and then there's one connection you'd have to make there for that board cam in the front. I always make a map of all my connections and a color code so I know what they are later and I'll know which goes where. The pre-positioned wire ties in the sides to hold the power cables for the ESCs from the battery and then I cut a slot in the bottom of the plane at the back so I can keep the wires under the floorboard. I added the poplar block inside the bottom of the airplane and then the plywood that was initially meant to go outside the plane for landing gear is now on the inside after I removed the blind nuts. I cut a notch in that so you could still use the velcro strap to secure batteries. And I made a new plate for the bottom of the plane out of 1 8 inch plywood. For the tail section, I've added a three pin servo connector so I can run an accessory at the tail. I like the angle that a cam gives from here. Uh, I've also notched out for the 433 antenna like I did on my last Skywalker, but I've been thinking about putting the video transmitter in the tail and the 433 receiver in the wing 
That way I could use bigger transmitter antennas for more range. I've also noticed that both of my other planes fly just slightly crooked, and I can only attribute that to having that big antenna in the wing. So there's still lots of work left to do. I've started on the backer plate for the gimbal mount for the front, and I need to come up with a good way to secure that front canopy if I'm going to have a heavy gimbal hanging off of it. And I've also started some of the electronics that I needed for the initial layout, like this power distribution hub that I built from salvage section of PCB. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching.